Actually, Ray, Ray, Ben Collins in the house. So w I feel like we need to give you a rank. Do we just call you general just for fun? No, no. Yes. No. Give no. him a promotion. Yeah. What, you no, deserve I, a promotion. So I, so I got out as a captain, and, and actually, um, I like that Captain we, Collins. Sounds like a TV show. And, and it was one time. Well, we've had we've had the A team, right? I mean, that was kind of my. That those were my guys, but one time on the air, uh, one of the one of the anchors, and I'm not going to say who, but one of the anchors uh, referred to me as general. And then through the whole three minutes, everybody else that was on kept referring to me. As general. <laughs> you I didn't stop you, them. And, well, I, I I did I couldn't stop them, but my phone had just about exploded. Oh, from the my, old my phone buddy exploding. Right. Wait, did saying, you hear from saying, any oh, yes. actual generals oh. saying, um, I don't think so, Ben. N well, no, but not I did yet, hear from anyway. a whole lot of you know captains, colonels, and majors <laughs> screaming at me saying, well, congratulations on your promotion, sir. But do you know what I'm so That's happy great. about? Because we just found out you went to school at Petty, which is in central New Jersey. Jersey, 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 Jersey. Yes. There. Born New in York. Texas, though. New York. I, right over the bridge. Born in Texas. I'm not going to come We're in Texas. I Houston. Know. Did you board at Petty? Okay. Or did you? I did. Oh, yep. okay. And by the way, Ben, I was born in Arizona on an Army base, Fort Huachuca, oh. Arizona, which is Army uh, Intelligence. Yes. 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 Wow. yes I was there for a, about a week until it caught fire. Uh, yes, I, it's very sad. It's still there, but it's okay. It's okay. The birthplace of the historic <laughs> birthplace of Monica, Monica Crowley. Crowley. I know. <laughs> I love that. Um, what was your most? And and so we have this live chat cooking with a few thousand people on it, about 8,500 right now. What was your most memorable experience when you were on the ground fighting in Afghanistan? Just something that seeks uh, that sticks out. Were you a dad at the time yet? No, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't a dad at the time. Um, a good question and, and I, it is a great question look I can tell you that viscerally you know the memory that I have was is driving out of um, Bagram Air Base uh, and this is I think O2 uh, driving to, to around the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan and I was in the back of a pickup truck um, and and seeing the truck in front of me had the American flag was was you know on the on the radio antenna was flying oh, and, wow. I'll, and I'll never forget that because it was it was very cold uh, the sun was coming up, the, you know, driving, and, I, and, you know, my first thought was, if you've ever seen Spies Like Us, I felt like oh the God, decoy I team, movie. right? I, felt, I was like, I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> like, are you sure I've been trained? But I, I, there was just such pride um, at, at that, you know, I, I'll never forget that, just seeing the, you know, the flag, and we'd just been hit. I lost a, a friend from Petty, actually, in the, in the towers. He worked for Cantor Fitzgerald. Um, so there was an immense pride that was there. I, I remember that. And the people at the time, you know, and that's something that, uh, that pains me now, but in 2002, you know, the, the Afghani people were still filled with hope, uh, you know, and they welcomed us with, you know, open arms, and it was, you know, high fives, and that really started to shift 2005, 6, 7, 8, really? certainly today, where it was kind of, you know, like, you know, here's, here's the new guy, almost same as the last guy. Was, um, was it because the new guy was really fairly corrupt? Um, the well, guy that we put in is so that is that what the problem was, or was it something else? So, so I'm not going to compare, you know, what what uh, what occurred, you know, during the years. Leadership. To, or, or, no, I was going to say I wasn't going to compare kind of our our you know our years there with the with certainly the Russians. Mm -hmm. um, but but again, you know, America, if we've learned anything, you know, we we create this this bureaucracy, this this massive bureaucracy, and we quickly went from. Um, you know, I, I remember in Afghanistan when, when there was maybe a one star, you know, who used to come into Afghanistan every now and then. Um, and, I, and I remember years, you know, my last trip in 2008, I mean, you'd see generals all over the place, uh, much less bringing in the Defense Department, the Department of, you know, Agriculture, because, well, they can't have poppy, let's come up with another crop that, mm. that they can build. It was absurd. But, you know, DHS, Homeland Security, you know, FBI, everybody came in and started to try to put their hands yeah. around this. Well, we were nation building. We, we were, and that's just, it was we, impossible. We got confused. We thought that we could do what the Russians thought that they could do that they couldn't do and we couldn't do either. I mean, it's a reason it's called the graveyard of, of empires and that's, it's you so know, sad. that goes back to the British, it goes back, even the Russians certainly learned it. So one thing that is painfully on display from what you just said, though, <laughs> you said, well, it was a sprawling government. And for a second there, my brain lapsed and I thought, is he talking about here? So apparently our footprint now, the thing that we export as Americans is the size of our government. Yes, hmm. yes, and we, and we see that problem here. You know, to me, that is the number one national security issue that we have at the end of the day. It's the fact that, look, you do have really good people that are working at the FBI and, and, and the CIA and the you know, NS, NSA. The problem is we've created this massive infrastructure and people can't talk to each other. You know, just look at what happened in, you know, at the Pulse nightclub in, in, in Florida, that horrible yeah. event. You had the FBI that, that conducts background checks. That's a chilling you know, are, the, are the same ones that, that, that interviewed this guy once or twice before. They're the same ones doing the, the look, you know, looking at the, at the gun, you know, gun background checks. And that, to me, uh, is, a, is a problem. The, the, the second thing is when you have a, and I'm going to say, look, the last years of Bush, certainly, and the Obama administration, when you don't have clear, concise goals, 
and when the guys on the ground don't know what it is that you're supposed to accomplish, you start to take less and less risk. And when guys are taking less and less risk, that's how we get these absurdity things that we see, like the FBI can't it's, talk to each other, rules of engagement, oh, getting each other killed. People just but say, wait for time, If you want to make cuts to the government, do you really want to focus on the national security infrastructure, the intelligence infrastructure? I certainly would not. If well, we're going to look for places, no. no, but I mean, what, what, when we're talking about government being too big, and we're talking about government not com different, brand, uh, different departments and agencies not communicating with each other, do we really want to start pointing fingers well, at the well, I will say the Pentagon certainly. You know, I would say definitely no. If anything, we're right. talking about smaller parts of the government where we need more people. We need more analysts. Well, we do need to get in, in and be more efficient. I mean, let, look, let's let's be honest here, especially within the Defense Department. I mean, I remember you go in and, and find out, well, we're, we're standing up a program that we want to, I remember this, we want to have handheld devices in the hands of soldiers so that they can collect biometric information and intelligence reporting. And we said that's a great program to start. Well, it turns out there wasn't just one, two, three. There was like seven of these programs going oh, on wow. within the Pentagon at the same time, redundancy. all with their own budgets, all with the redundancy, and nobody talking to each other. Is that how we manage to train five guys with a half billion dollars exactly how we on do the it. ground in Iraq? Can I ask yes. you, Ben, about, you were talking about the, the walls that are in place that prevent intelligence and, and um, security services from talking to each other and sharing information. Correct me if I'm wrong, but after 9-11 and the 9-11 Commission report, those walls were supposed to have been taken down so that there was the easy flow of information. You're saying that never happened? Oh, I think they might have attempted it, and we certainly we have places, we've, we've, we do have areas that I think they're doing much better, places like the Joint Counterterrorism Centers when they bring people together. But, but the, the problem is, I think, twofold. One, it's a culture, and there's very cultural differences within those organizations. Uh, and, and two, it's the mission focus. Right, so you take a take somebody like um, you know Border Patrol, right? I mean, they're collecting information down to where they are. They have a mission to protect the border, and they've got that side of it. You know, the FBI has a different mission. You know, the CIA has a different mission. And unless something that they collect, at least intelligence, falls under their parameters, that the for the most part, it kind of gets of, of the ODNI yes. of the I, Director I of kind of National of Intelligence. Tick that's, down yes, some stuff supposedly. that's supposedly. happening on our live chat, just because people are getting in on the conversation. So I want to give them a chance. So I'm just going to read these off. You don't have to respond, or you can. Uh, C Y N Young GOP, Jillian, I love your shoes. Uh, <laughs> MW, <too>. Texas, <laughs> unlike Obama, I do not think it's wise to announce your plans to defeat ISIS over the media. Um, let's see, fed up in Lakewood. Is Monica Crowley related to Candy? <laughs> no, the answer is um, no. <laughs> all right. <laughs> funny. Uh, I, I'm just ticking down here. Um, blah, blah, blah. Unga Bunga. I just wanted to say his name. <laughs> Please ask Julian Ben how the $400 million payment to Iran is not a firestorm of controversy like the Iran Contra scandal that plagued the Reagan administration in 1985. Mm -hmm. You're nodding. You want to take it first, then, Julie? Uh, well, I'll, I'll leave most of it to Julie, but why isn't it a big controversy? I think it should be a big controversy, but the fact of the matter is there's one news network that's, that's going to cover this, I think, in perpetuity, and that's going to be Fox, and I think all the others are going to try to quickly push it away because it puts a black mark on President Obama, which will put a black mark on, on Hillary Clinton, and they're going to try to avoid that at all costs. Well, Arms for Hostages, without going into all the historic relevance there, was done sort of extrajudiciously to some extent, and with, uh, according to Reagan, even without his knowledge, although... Some people doubt that. Um, in this case, this was done. I know people think it was done sub rosa, but the reality is there was a deal negotiated in the Netherlands. This was money that they, that we felt the Iranians were entitled to, whether you agree with it or not. But that's what happened. This wasn't done extrajudiciously in any way, and that's the difference. We also, well, uh, we also, hold we on. also but but, but we, we of course it was. I mean, they did it in the middle of the night, and they they had pallets, and they had to make it with Swiss francs and euros because they couldn't do it in American dollars but because that not, was against the law. But it's not extrajudiciously in the sense that this followed international law. Isn't extrajudiciously law. mean it's outside the the law? The, the scope scope of this, the law. It means mm -hmm. no. No. The way it was done here is that again, you may agree or disagree with the decision that was negotiated, but it was negotiated. And my understanding is we can't give no, them No, the dollars. Obama administration found the pretext in order to transfer this money. Well, for but if hostages. they had... So no. they went back to a nearly 40-year-long uh, agreement before the Islamic Revolution in 1949 and said, oh, we, before the revolution, we owed them 1.7, so we'll transfer part of it now and get the hostages I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree, but back. we're not selling arms to the Iranians to have the Iranians influence Hezbollah or whoever no. in Lebanon. But what do you think you know, they got the first things that they did? To get, in exchange to get money so that we could fund the, uh, the Contras down in Nicaragua. 
give so it one, of the, one of the first if things that they settled, did is they bought they they they've already made a deal with Russians to buy attack helicopters and tanks. Right. Already. And what what, what was the, the State Department guy Kirby? But it was hilarious. States, he said they're going to spend or no, Josh Ernest said they're going to spend it on You know who that's going to make very happy? Paul Manafort. Uh, Jill. If we hadn't you know, agreed <laughs> if we hadn't agreed to go to settle and this had gone forward we were going to end up in arrears of something like $10 billion. So this was actually a money-saving mechanism. From mm -hmm. what I'm not defending it because I was critical about this when we discussed it just a half an hour ago, but wouldn't you rather pay the but Iranian why, regime one pint Why, why and, have 40 well, years transpired since this deal was negotiated with the Shah, who now no longer exists? We've got a, an Islamic theocracy in power. Why didn't any president, Republican or Democrat, decide in the last question. 40 years it was to in pay and this out? Of the courts, it, and it wasn't going forward because well, they and there was a reason it wasn't going was forward reason. because so, you're talking about the greatest state this, Why was the money the even necessary based on the seven prisoner swap, based on the 21 that were being adjudicated that we lifted that process and, and wiped it away for? Why? Why did you need 400 million? And did we just have sailors? The, wasn't Taken. that in the same? Yes. In the same. I, I guess. I, I guess my I guess my larger question is this: and now there are whether you agree or disagree with this. And let, let's say that the Obama administration is wrong, and that you're right, and that we did in, in fact do a prisoner swap for money. Do we leave our people in the? Uh, in, do we leave them starving in the prison? That's not the, point. That's not the point. point. Why did we have to sweeten it to the point in which we did? And that that question also holds for the Iran nuclear deal in general. That was right. my, that's my concern. Sweet it was exactly because maybe some of the additives that made it so delicious are in those side deals that we haven't seen. Exactly. That's um, the, that's the gosh. Bigger. I wish we had time for this question. I'll just read it and then we'll go from our live chat. Martyr says, Trump says the election is rigged. He may be correct because several federal judges appointed by Barack Obama in several states have declared their voting laws unconstitutional. This brings back memories of ACORN and illegal immigrants voting for uh, Democrats. I want to save that one for tomorrow. Um, Captain Collins? Yes. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. This was a blast. Thanks for Thank your you. service. Yes. Uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye.